Pokemon Gold with only one chance he was a slog, but it's time for another requested one. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Red with a team of only one coughing? Coughing is a bit underwhelming, with solid defense but is a pure poison type, a weak type because in Gen 1 it's only super effective against bug and grass, but because most grass types in the game are part poison, it deals neutral damage. His only really good moves are Sludge and Smokescreen, moves he doesn't learn for quite a long time, being stuck with only Tackle and Smog for the start. By TM, he can't learn much. Thunderbolt, Fire Blast, and Toxic stand out as the best moves here. Like always, I'm writing the script before I go through with the challenge, so all of this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. I know that I'm not looking forward to the Brock or Misty fights, but maybe by the third gym I'll have Sludge and do decent damage. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use one coughing. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs and items outside of combat are allowed. Let's do this. So right off the bat, I use the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Squirtle with coughing so that we can do the whole run with it. I name mine Dawnset, like in my Pokemon Shield playthrough. We start with Tackle and Smog. Considering Smog is only 20 power and 70 accuracy with a 40% chance of poisoning, we really can't rely on this very much. Like usual, I work my way through Viridian Forest. It's not too bad since we can't get poisoned by Weedles, and since in Gen 1, poison is super effective against Bug, we do have a decent move. Still, I'm gonna need to level up a lot before Brock, so I take my time to fight every single trainer that I can here. I also go back and do the optional rival fight. It only took a few tries thanks to Pidgey's sand attack being awful to deal with, but we ended up winning without much problem, although we don't really get much experience out of it. At level 15, I take a shot at Brock, just to see how far I get. I'm sure you can see the problem here though. Both of our attacks are getting resisted, Smog misses like crazy, and even if I poison him, he has full heals. Considering I don't learn a stronger move to level 32, I don't think victory is right around the corner. I mostly grind in the forest since Metapod and Kakuna give decent experience, and even if Smog is inaccurate, it does hit surprisingly hard with this level difference. Considering we hardly get any experience though, this is a lot like the opening of the Metronome Challenge. At level 20 I tried Brock again, figuring that maybe I stood a chance if I poisoned him enough times. You know, I knew that Brock had at least two full heals, but I didn't know if he had more than that. Well, I learned the hard way that he is exactly five full heals. I managed to take down Geodude thanks to the poison, but I could only get Onyx to about half health. I'm gonna need a few more levels. I try again at level 22 and get much farther, almost taking out Onyx. Part of it is luck on how many smogs I miss, but when I'm this close to winning, I think only one or two more levels is all that it will take. Finally at level 25 I fight him again. I do well against Geodude, hardly getting hurt and managing to use up all five of his full heals while still having smogs left, but when I fight Onyx is when it gets really ridiculous. I poisoned him, and he pulled out another full heal twice. I actually ran out of smogs, I can only assume that Brock actually has 10 full heals and will only use 5 per Pokemon, but I could be wrong. Who knows at this point? Regardless, I got very lucky on his use of Bide, and I ended up winning with half of my health to spare. The one nice thing about being overleveled for Brock is that I lay an absolute beatdown on the trainers past him. Tackle is only 35 power in Gen 1, but when you're mostly fighting bugs that are less than half your level, it makes for some very quick fights. I'll need those levels though, since I'm not sure I can beat Misty without Sludge. On my way to Misty though, I took the Helix Fossil. I knew that if I didn't say what I took, you'd all ask. Actually, now that I think about it, everyone ask anyway. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. She starts with Staryu and Smog's inaccuracy isn't doing us any favors, but a couple of critical hits in and I managed to poison him. Water Gun does decent damage, but we finish off Staryu. Starmie is a different story, with Bubble Beam hitting us hard. Smog doesn't quite have the punch that we need, and it only takes a few hits for us to faint. We'll have to come back here when we have Sludge. I move on to my rival instead, first with Pidgeotto. I was petrified that I'd end up getting sand attacked a bunch, ruining my smog, but he actually didn't hit it once and we ended up taking him out without any serious trouble. Abra can't fight back and that's a one shot so it's on to Rattata. Our high defense really pays off here with me hardly taking any damage as a couple of smogs take it out. 
Last is Bulbasaur, but we resist grass so two tackles is all it takes. After clearing the northern route and getting a few more wild fights in, we hit level 32 and learn Sludge. A 65 power, 100 accuracy move that had a 40% chance to poison in this game. It's a bit strong, but it's no thunderbolt or flamethrower. Still, considering it's poison type and we're poison type, it might be our best attacking move all game. Time for round 2 with Misty. Staryu is a one-shot, but thanks to X-Defense, Starmie actually survives the first shot just fine. We're just far too powerful for her at this point though, so we take her out without any trouble. It might seem excessive, but I decided to grind on the trainers in the SSN and nearby routes. Not so much because we need it for the next rival fight or gym, but because we're probably going to need it for the rock trainers in the upcoming rock tunnel. Our rival was a borderline sweep as I expected, we're just too strong for him. After getting cut, I go into the electric gym and start with the trash can puzzle. It takes three attempts to get it. Not great, but not awful if you know the general rule of always check the top left for the second switch in Gen 1. Surge is a total one-shot sweep as I expected, so I went straight to Rock Tunnel. On my way though, I used the Thunderbolt TM that Surge gave us to replace Smog. This will give us a little bit more type coverage, and Thunderbolt is just a really solid special move. Our special stat is lower than our attack, but hey, it's something. Although I know my way through Rock Tunnel through doing it so many times in my life, it's still pretty slow. A lot of required trainer battles and a really high encounter rate. And of course, I forgot to buy repels. The biggest threat though are the hikers. Even at half my level, we're terrible at dealing with rock type Pokemon, relying heavily on poisoning with sludge and their rock throws being inaccurate. I nearly lost to one of the easier hikers in the tunnel thanks to already being around half health when it started. I decided to go straight for the Pokemon Tower rival fight early to see how we stack up. Thunderbolt takes out both Pidgeotto and Gyarados in one hit, as does Sludge with Growlithe, Kadabra, and Ivysaur. I didn't think I was going to win this fight, let alone a one-shot sweep. With that done, I pick up Fly West to Celadon City for the sake of keeping my sanity. Normally I like to do the Rocket Hideout next, but hey, if we're doing things out of the typical order anyway, why don't I try the Grass Gym? Poison is good against Grass, and we resist Grass, but two of Erica's three Pokémon are part Poison, so the game will announce that our moves are not very effective, but in reality, the damage it deals is the correct number. The text saying it's not very effective or super effective is often just wrong on dual types in Gen 1, but the damage is correct. I thought I'd clear that up because a lot of people ask about that. Anyway, Erica time, first with Victory Bell. He used Rap, the most annoying move in Gen 1, but it only lasted a few turns and we're faster, so we finish him off the moment he lets go. Tangela is the only pure grass type in Gen 1, so it gets one shot like it's nothing, and Vileplume takes a critical sludge one-shotting it. I thought they'd hang on a little better than that. I move right on to Giovanni. He's got rock types, so I knew he'd be tough. Onyx is out first, and I'm sure you remember how much of a pain this guy was with Brock, but this time he uses Rage, a borderline useless move in Gen 1, so we have all the time in the world to pick him apart. Second is Rhyhorn, and we poison him on our first sludge. I tried some smoke screens, but they mostly missed, and our high defense kept us from getting too beaten up, so I just whittled him down with sludge. Last is Kangaskhan, and we get a critical sludge to take it out fast. That went better than expected. With that done and the rival fight at the Pokemon Tower already taken care of, we can just waltz to the top of the tower while thunderbolting our way through a dozen ghosts to easily pick up the Pokeflute. Now that we can get to Fuchsia, I take care of the Safari Zone early just to get the Strength and Surf HMs out of the way. Next I start fighting all the trainers in Silphco. So we're between a rock and a hard place right now. Our options for major fights are Koga's Poison Gym and the Silphco rival fight. Koga has a larger team than me, resists poison so Sludge isn't great, and his levels aren't far off of mine so Thunderbolt probably won't do enough. On the other hand, the Silphco rival battle is infamously a massive jump in difficulty, and although having a strong electric move would get me far, Alakazam is a fast, psychic-typed crit machine who'd probably one-shot us before I could even attempt an attack. At level 54, I decide to take a shot at the rival. Pidgeot, Gyarados, and Growlithe were all one shot, so let's skip ahead to Alakazam. He's still faster than us and nails a Psybeam for half our health, but he didn't critically hit us, so we managed to take him out with Sludge. Last is Venusaur and we got Leech Seeded, but then our rival tried to use Leech Seed again for some reason, so we got an easy knockout. Well, that was weirdly easy. Giovanni is next and this is a rough one. Nidorino is an easy two-shot with Thunderbolt and Tackle, and Kangaskhan only takes two sludges. 
Once again, I poisoned Rhydon and tried for smoke screens, but I just kept missing again, so I just went back to Sludge, although I did get hit by some tail whips in the process and lost some defense. Finally, we're into Nita Queen, and she's tough. She resists Sludge, is immune to Thunderbolt, and hits hard. I ended up hitting a handful of smoke screens for safety before settling on Tackle as my attack of choice, and actually critically hitting twice in a row for massive damage. Thanks to that, we ended up winning the fight without any real problems. I move on to Koga, and it doesn't go how I expected. Thunderbolt one-shots coughing, two-shots muck, one-shots his second coughing, and then his wheezing uses X attack, then self-destructs, and I manage to hang on at low health for the win. That was a really weird fight. I decided that I'd go to Cinnabar Island next so I could do the Fire Gym before the Psyche Gym. Blaine's Fire-type Pokémon might be a higher level, but he often does stupid stuff like using potions on full health Pokémon whereas Sabrina uses terrifyingly fast and strong psychic types that crit a lot and are super effective against us. Time for Blaine. Growlithe and Ponyta are both one-shots with Sludge. Rapidash tail whipped us, but thanks to a speed tie, we were able to take it out without getting hit. Last was RK9, and he could really mess us up. But like usual, Blaine was using super potions on him while he was at full health. Then using Roar, a move that does nothing in trainer battles in Gen 1. Easy win. With that done, I move on to Sabrina's psychic gym. Kadabra goes down in one sludge, Mr. Mime goes down in one critical sludge, Venomoth goes down in one sludge, and is Alakazam time. He sets up his Reflect to buff his defense, then he critically hits a Psybeam, taking us from full health to four health, as we finish him with another sludge. This is why I held off fighting her as long as I could. Every last level really did end up mattering. One level lower and we probably would have lost. Finally, it's time for Giovanni's Ground Gym. Right on is first, so I used Sludge until he got poisoned, then just tackled my way through. It's a very slow strategy, but it saves on power points for Sludge. We take it out, but not before losing a third of our health. Second is Doug Trio, and I take him out in one lucky critical hit. Nita Queen is out next, and she's a real problem thanks to being part poison type. I ended up just using Tackle five times to take her out, although I did get hit hard and even paralyzed from a body slam for my troubles. Nito King is next, and he's just as hard, so I start with smoke screens to try and stay safe. At this point, I'm only at 15 health though, so I need every hit I can get. He gets confused off Thrash, and between Confusion Damage and Tackle, he goes down. Last is Rhydon, and he keeps going for the incredibly inaccurate Fissure, so I just kept smoke screening him until Giovanni used a Guard spec. Then I switched to Sludge, just to get instantly hit by Fissure. Yes, I had four smoke screens on him, and he landed Fissure. That's my luck. I've gotta grind. Second try and we're level 70. Sludge gets the poison in early and we tackle Rhyhorn down while taking a lot less damage this time. Dugtrea still goes down in one hit, and next is Nido Queen. She starts tail whipping us early, and between her doing it and Rhyhorn hitting one, it could be bad. Weirdly enough, she critically body slammed me twice, and considering critical hits don't take stat changes into account, we'd have taken more damage if she didn't crit. We did get paralyzed though, so I can't call it too lucky, and by the time we take her down, our defense has been lowered a ton from Tail Whips. Nido King is out, but he takes a strangely large amount of damage from Tackle, so he goes down fast. Last is Rhydon, and once again, he is using Fissure. In Gen 1, one-hit KO moves hit if your current speed is lower than theirs. Since I'm paralyzed, he can hit us, so I keep smoke screening until he uses a guard spec to stop me. Then I switch to spamming Sludge. I miss a ton of turns due to paralysis, but he never manages to land a fissure on me, and I end up winning the fight. With that done, we have to go up against our rival again. Pidgeot is a one-shot, and Rhyhorn is just a sludge and a tackle spam fight, so I'm sure you'd expect how that goes by now. Gyarados is a one-shot with Thunderbolt, as is Growlithe with Sludge. Alakazam is faster than us and hits a massive Psybeam that would have taken us out if he had gotten a crit, as we take him out with Sludge. Last is Venusaur, but we crit it with Sludge, so it never gets a chance to attack us. Next is the Elite Four, but I'm gonna have to grind first. Like usual, we could probably handle most of the Elite Four with a bit of luck, but there is no way we're gonna survive the rival's Alakazam in the final fight unless we're faster than him. So I decide that I'm gonna need to level up all the way to level 85. Let's take a look at our stats. 215 health is alright, and our defense is great. Our speed might be enough to be faster than Alakazam, but it's hard to say. Make your guesses on if we can beat the Elite Four or not. Let's do this. First is Ice Trainer Lorelei. Her whole team never lands a hit on us, mostly because I one-shot most of her team. Second is Fighting Trainer Bruno. I was worried about this one. First is Onyx, and he's already using Harden and X Defense, so I just poison him with Sludge and spam Tackle to save on power points. 
When he gets really tanky, I use smoke screen once for safety and then get back to tackling. It takes quite a bit, but in the end, I hardly take any damage thanks to Onyx using Rage. Himonchan goes down in one Sludge, and Hitmonlee goes down in one Thunderbolt. After that is a second Onyx. This one uses Rage early, and in Gen 1, that locks him into just doing that, so I just spam Sludge since his defense isn't gonna raise beyond the occasional X defend anyway. Weirdly enough, I never ended up poisoning him, so I wasted a lot of power points. Last is Machamp, but he just used Leer, so I took him out in no time. Between battles, I used a Hyper Potion and moved on. Third is Ghost Trainer Agatha. Gengar took a Thunderbolt, but used Dream Eater in spite of me being awake, so a second Thunderbolt ended it. Agatha's AI in Gen 1 is infamously terrible. Golbat was a one-shot, and next out is Haunter, who survives a Thunderbolt, confuses us, and we hit ourselves twice. Agatha just keeps trying to confuse us while we're already confused, though, and uses Dream Eater while we're awake, so we're fine. Arbok comes out, gets hit, and switches for another Gengar for no reason, as I get nailed with a huge Nightshade and take him down in two Thunderbolts. Finally, Arbok is back out and easily goes down to a critical tackle. Fourth is Dragon Trainer Lance. This one is surprisingly easy, with most of his team being a one-shot with Sludge and Thunderbolts. I would have thought that Lance would have been harder than Bruno. Regardless, after the battle, I heal up and use some Aethers to prepare for our arrival. Finally, it's the Pokemon Champion. Pidgeot is a one-shot with Thunderbolt, and the terrifying Alakazam is next. He hits Psychic and deals over half of our health and damage as we take him out with Sludge. We got so lucky that he didn't crit and one-shot us since he crits so much. We poison right on right away as he mostly just uses weak moves like Leer and Fury Attack. We get a couple smoke screens in for safety, but for the most part we whittle him down with Tackles and Sludge. Gyarados is another easy one-shot with Thunderbolt, so next is RK9. Once again, he only uses Leer, so two sludges take it out. Last is Venusaur, and although he goes for Mega Drain, we resist it, and it hardly hurts us. Two sludges take it out, and get us in the Hall of Fame. That was easier than I was expecting. Considering I had mediocre stats, terrible type coverage, and Alakazam is a meat grinder, Sludge really pulled through for us. I'm not sure what I'll do next Saturday for the Pokemon Challenge, but as you know, I'm always looking at your suggestions. Ring the bell, subscribe, and stay tuned. If you want to see me do more challenges like this, please let me know in the comments or on Twitter. I can always use more ideas from you guys on what I should do next. Also, check out the playlist in the description to watch all of the Pokemon challenges that I've already uploaded. If you want to see more Pokemon stuff from me, my friend What a Geek and I are doing a Gen 1 randomizer over on his channel, linked in the description. Also, come to my Twitch TV streams and tell me that this video sent you. It's always cool to hear how you found the channel. Thank you everybody so much for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.